de ba ye kene ni mono no bose nketa ai si na ya de ndi bona ma ta di ko si de um ya bo ibo media ka isi wene o teru ni ya bo nu ko zi di o kempa eh basta ma ka ni ibo and ibo community and ye de bena nigeria ya bi fika ina o teru na ibo media eh di ko isi we de so la yo bona nka bo o bosi zigi ina bi na ni lo akwo na ibo media eka baro ka e subscribe bo and turn on the notification ke la pe miss any of our update di ka ni ti pe ni ba popo wa mbe kwa mbe e di ko si de o wuri ya wete do no bo sin keta bo stamaka ka ya bi face ada and bo stamaka ka ya bi face abotu na ni igbo e bi ko ma cho ki ge ya bi fe ya bo bi from prime minister ma zi samon e pa o wo di foku ni ro kwọ ma choko nge onu ge se bi fe ona drop ora ifu nche ni ro awọ ba samaki yenda ni no wo alright over to you sir on behalf of his excellency the peace ambassador our prime minister eba simon njako I, Dr. Ngozora Bweze, the Chief of Staff of the Biafra Republic Government in Exile, soon to be the United States of Biafra. <laughs> and the de facto government at home by the powers conferred on me by His Excellency, the Prime Minister, I'm going to go ahead and read his speech. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome everyone to this beautiful venue in Lati. Thank you to the people and the government of Finland. My name is Dr. Ngazi Orobweze. Our presence here today, sorry, let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. I stand here on this memorable event in Lati to welcome Biafrans and dignitaries from all over the world that are here present in Finland. Last year, we gathered in Helsinki to chart a new cause for our people and fight for our freedom. This year, we are gathering again to review our progress and make definite statements about our freedom. The challenges we face are still enormous, but one thing is clear. Because our angels, Biafra Defense Forces and Resistance Fighters, have dispatched their duties with utmost professionalism, the oppressors have realized they can't kill their way out of our quest for freedom. <laughs> they apply to deceive the people with fake restructuring and state creation will not work. You all remember We've been asking for restructuring for ages, and Nigeria have refused. Now that our PM has risen up, they now want regional government. Not for us anymore. None of these ploys will bring back the thousands of Biafrans the Nigeria state have killed. Just for carrying flags, or on mere suspicion of being an indigenous people of Biafra membership. Just for being an IPOB, just for being a Biafran, Nigeria murders our people in the thousands. Many families have been rendered childless, motherless, and or fatherless by the Nigeria state. Many people have had their homes and businesses burnt or destroyed by Nigeria state. Many more people have died as a result of secondary effects of the pain and suffering we have had to endure in the hands of the Nigerian state. My fellow dear friends, as I look back over three years since the abduction and extraordinary rendition of our leader, Onyendu Mazinam Dekano MNK, 
and the severe suffering this act brought unto our people, I am saddened by the extreme cruelty the Nigerian state has unleashed on our people. We have endured a lot and stand to endure even more, underscoring our resolve to attain our inalienable God-given right to existence, freedom, pursuit of happiness, and livelihood. Dear friends, are begging to leave. We are begging to leave. Not anymore. Not anymore. The Nigerian state has been anything but an impediment to all these ideals. Hence, our resolve to exit the enclave that has never been more urgent than now. I salute the courage of Biafrans in the homeland who have borne the brunt of Nigeria's state sponsored cruelty, particularly those that have paid the ultimate price and their families. To the Biafrans in diaspora, I cannot thank you enough for standing up for your compatriots and being a source of hope for the defenseless people in the homeland who are victims in many respects, including loss of our collective wealth to a select privileged few who then turn around and denigrate the people as miscreants. This sorry state of the enclave is the primary inspiration for MK's fight for the freedom for our people on realization that a fix within the current enclave and its institutions is impossible. In this regard, we initiated a self-referendum voting for our people to decide whether or not they support Biafra independence from Nigeria. This voting process started on February 1st, 2024 and ran through November 28th, 2024. The voting just ended, the referendum. The full results will be out in the next two, three weeks to the world. The participation was massive, with approximately 50 million votes cast. The results of the self-referendum will be released later, in the next one or two weeks. Once again, I welcome you to the most beautiful and most hospitable city, Lati, Finland. Thank you so much. With fake restructuring and state creation will not work. You all remember? We've been asking for restructuring for ages and Nigeria have refused. Now that our PM has risen up, they now want regional government. Not for us anymore. None of these ploys will bring back the thousands of Biafrans the Nigeria state have killed just for carrying flags or on mere suspicion of being an indigenous people of Biafra membership. Just for being an IPOB, just for being a Biafran, Nigeria mothers our people in the thousands. Many families have been rendered childless, motherless, and or fatherless by the Nigeria state. Many people have had their homes and businesses burnt or destroyed by Nigeria state. Many more people have died as a result of secondary effects of the pain and suffering we have had to endure in the hands of the Nigerian state. My fellow dear friends, as I look back over three years since the abduction and extraordinary rendition of our leader, Onyendu Mazinam the Kano MNK, and the severe suffering this act brought unto our people, I am saddened by the extreme cruelty the Nigeria state has unleashed on our people. We have endured a lot and stand to endure even more, underscoring our resolve to attain our inalienable God-given right to existence, freedom, pursuit of happiness and livelihood. Dear friends are begging to leave. We are begging to leave, not anymore. Not anymore. The Nigerian state has been anything but an impediment to all these ideals. Hence, our resolve to exit the enclave that has never been more urgent than now. I salute the courage of Biafrans in the homeland who have borne the brunt of Nigeria's state-sponsored cruelty, 
particularly those who have paid the ultimate price and their families. To the dear friends in diaspora, I cannot thank you enough for standing up for your compatriots and being a source of hope for the defenseless people in the homeland who are victims in many respects, including loss of our collective wealth to a select privileged few who then turn around and denigrate the people as miscreants. This sorry state of the enclave is the primary inspiration for MK's fight for the freedom for our people on realization that a fix within the current enclave and its institutions is impossible. In this regard, we initiated a self-referendum voting for our people to decide whether or not they support Biafra independence from Nigeria. This voting process started on February 1st, 2024 and ran through November 28, 2024. The voting just ended, the referendum. The full results will be out in the next two, three weeks to the world. The participation was massive, with approximately 50 million votes cast. The results of the self-referendum will be released later, in the next one or two weeks. Once again, I welcome you to the most beautiful and most hospitable city, Lati, Finland. Thank you so much. Uh, dear friends, thank you very much for your presence here. Um, I want to recognize our leader, uh, Mazin Nandikano. I want also to recognize our um, Prime Minister, His Excellency Simon uh, Edman Joko. They have given our people hope. They saw the tribulations our people are passing through, and they have done the needful. And we are fortunate to have a prophet in the name of Mazin Nandekano, who everybody testifies that everything he had prophesied had happened. In the same a comparable capacity, our Prime Minister has promised a lot of things, and pretty much everything he has promised, he has delivered, including this day. Um, we, uh, the Declaration Committee, met, met severally and documented all our grievances and I have their mandate to read them today for you, uh, for everyone present here to endorse. So without wasting your time, this is the Declaration of Restoration of Independent United States of Biafra, December, sorry, um, today is November 29th, 2024, here in Lati, uh, Finland. We, the officials of Biafra Republic government in exile, Biafra de facto government in the homeland, and the delegates from across the world representing the constituent states of the United States of Biafra, who collectively and individually advocate for self-preservation of our people in the face of unrivaled genocidal onslaught by Nigeria government against our people in Nigeria and the 40 states of the United States of Biafra have gathered here in Lati, Finland, this day, November 29, 2024, to make the following declarations. Whereas we have endured political marginalization, economic deprivation, 
periodic massacre of Biafra people within Biafra land and across Nigeria since the 1914 amalgamation and creation of Nigeria. Whereas we have endured all this in hope that one day things would be better. Even the initial declaration of an independent state of Biafra and the 13 month civil war in which more than 5 million of our compatriots perished was not enough to steer Nigeria towards that elusive, inclusive and prosperous future. Rather, despite its false claim of no victor, no vanquished, and false promises of the triple R, which refers to reconciliation, rehabilitation, and reconstruction, the Nigeria government constantly pursued a winner-takes-it-all policy designably reflective of a master-slave relationship. We have endured all this with so much reluctance to complain. We have resorted to self-help and strived to provide for ourselves basic necessities of life that ordinarily governments across the world provide for their citizens. We have carried on in the face of unimaginable hardship until our very existence became threatened beyond human tolerance limits. In 1999, we started nonviolent agitation with flags. Instead of sending negotiators to address our agitation, the Nigeria government resorted to systematic killings of our people, aiming to exterminate all the agitators and killing tens of thousands of Biafrans in the process and harvesting their, the organs of thousands of those they abducted. Nigeria government intensified its widespread massacre of Biafrans, Biafra people under the Fulani controlled government of Muhammad Buhari in 2015 and has continued since then. Our leader, Mazen Nandekano, escaped assassination when Nigeria military invaded his home on September 17, 2017, an invasion that, led, that left 28 other Biafrans dead. Three years later, Nigeria went as far as abducting our leader, Mazen Nandekano, in Kenya and renditioning him to Nigeria in June 2021 and has detained him in solitary confinement for more than three years now, despite two Nigeria court judgments and a United Nations work group on arbitrary detention mandating his release with compensation. These ongoing brutalities against our people serve as frequent reminder that the war that supposedly ended in 1970 never really ended. In response to the various shades of existential threats Nigeria is presenting to the people of Biafra and out of the natural law of self-defense and consistent with the United Nations and African Union Charters on people's right to self-defense, we started carrying arms, officially in 2022. Now, therefore, to protect ourselves from government-sponsored violence, we have reached an incontrovertible conclusion that self-determination and self-governance are the only viable permanent solutions against ongoing violence orchestrated by the Nigeria state against the indigenous people of Biafra. And both 
give us state power to protect ourselves from external aggression such as invasion by Fulanese from other countries, which Nigeria is not preventing but facilitating. On the basis of these and many more grievances listed here under, and knowing fully well that we are a group of people confronting several extenuating circumstances that collectively make our people an endangered species, and knowing fully well that the only means for our collective survival is self-preservation and self-determination, we are taking these steps to declare the restoration of the independence of the United States of Biafra, also known as the Confederate States of Biafra. Before independence in 1960, population distribution in Nigeria conformed to global trends in which population centers are in lower elevation regions with better climate and easy access to water, food, and shelter. In 1960, Nigeria was comprised of three supposedly equal regions, not with 14 provinces, east with 12 provinces, and west with nine provinces. This meant that the north had 14 provinces while the south had 21 provinces. However, after independence, and with political power in the hands of unscrupulous elements from the north, the geopolitical distortion began in the most senseless manners. Nigeria became a country where human settlements violated laws of nature, with outrageous claims that more people live in the hot, arid north than the mild coastal south. Gradual and arbitrary creation of states by mainly military leaders from the North over the years resulted in the North today having 19 states and 414 local government areas, while the South has 17 states and 355 local government areas. This distortion in the geopolitical structure of Nigeria has been used to politically and economically marginalize the people of Biafra. Because the number of states and local governments are directly used for political representation and revenue allocation to the disadvantage of the South, even though as much as 90% of the resources sustaining Nigeria come from oil and gas resources in Biafra land. Distortions in geopolitical structure, resource control, religious incompatibility, and a larger ambition by the Fulani oligarchy to make Nigeria a Fulani country are at the core of instability and insecurity in Nigeria. And all avenues by indigenous people to seek redress have been met with brute force. Such brute force has resulted in military invasion of numerous communities in Biafra land and indiscriminate killings of people in those communities at genocidal scale. For example, Section 1 of the Biafra Declaration Handbook captures several of the Nigeria government-sponsored killings in the hinterland of the United States of Biafra, also called the Southeast, as well as the South-South. Notably, a Zoo River massacre under Governor Peter B, Onisha Mpo massacre under Governor Obiano, 
Obaru massacres under Governor Soludo, Obibo massacre under Governor Wike, Ohafia and Aba massacres, including 150 youths praying at Ngwa High School, and another hundreds of innocent Biafrans on a parade in Aba, as well as the invasion of Mazin Nandekanu's home that left at least 28 people dead under Governor Ibazo. Also, widespread Ebony massacres under Governor Umahi, widespread Enugu massacres under Governor Uguanyi, widespread Imo massacres, including repeated invasions of Izombe, although also under Governor Zodema. Nigeria terrorist forces also unleashed mayhem and killed hundreds of Biafrans who were celebrating in Port Harcourt Donald Trump's victory in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. In all these, tens of thousands of Biafrans have been killed. But the coastal regions of Biafra have also not been spared in these killings, and more than 4,000 people were killed between 1999 and 2024. In particular, all the massacre in 1999 Kuala massacres in 99 and ongoing Ozoro Ole massacres 99-2003, Uweru massacres 2021-2023, Okuama massacre 2024, Olodiyama massacre 2024, and not to forget the one of the worst recorded massacres in human history in Asaba. 1967-70. Also, the eastern flank of Biafra covering former Cross River and Akwaibon states has its record of Nigeria government-sponsored killings, including in 2021 when Nigeria military invaded the following communities with substantial loss of lives. Afahat, Ekot, Apan, Okan, Owa, Ekot Afanga, Ntok Nsek, Ekot Upon Eto, Ekot Otu, Ekot Obok, Ntak Ekot Akan, and some other communities. Since after the 2021 invasion, the military has maintained presence there and are frequently abducting people, killing them, harvesting their organs snatching people's wives and raping our women. They maintain checkpoints where travelers must disembark from their vehicles with arms raised while passing the checkpoint on foot. This pattern of military and police intimidation is commonplace in the whole of Biafra land. It beats our imagination how people's lives can be devalued this much in one's native country. In contrast, there has never been military invasion of communities in northern Nigeria, just as there are rarely communal clashes in the north, unlike the south. Because of Nigeria government's divide and rule strategy in the south, several communities are separated from their from historical alliances and forced into new ones, often with poorly defined boundaries. Such machinations by the Nigeria government have been responsible for the spate of boundary-inspired communal clashes in Biafra land, which is relatively absent in the north. The United States of Biafra will reunite communities along natural and historical boundaries and bring an end to boundary disputes. Aside from killings directly conducted by Nigeria government, various Fulani affiliated terrorist groups such as Boko Haram, Iswap, Fulani Hesmen, in their desire to displace indigenous people and take over their lands, are invading communities and slaughtering them in a scale never seen before. For example, many Fulani installed kings and political appointees 
forcefully seize indigenous people's lands and transfer the lands to Fulanis. The Oba of Benin is reported to have sold in three years 1,200 acres of land to Aligoke Dangote, and Dangote trucks are used to ship in Fulani terrorists into these lands from where the Fulanis operate and unleash terror in the neighboring communities and the entire coastal region, especially in Eka State, former Delta State, where the kidnappers in Eka land come from Bini, former Edo State. The Fulani terrorists and kidnappers in Awo, in Abovo County, reportedly will make you cook for them, cook for the terrorists, and have you watch them rape your wife in order to spare your life. And by a canopy moon, a consignor in a Ibo media, boy by see what the Nyabo was see Joe Kemper, Master Makaya brief, their from Prime Minister of the Liba Cooper, no pursuit of Chinketa. A key few will equal Master Makaya brief in the Nino Kuga see the teacher, a drop or a feature in Nino Cooper, a commentation in a Ibo media, and by as an anybody are there, now Thank you and God bless you.